Yes, brother. Hello, sir. My question is, uh, are there any Muslim people who have believed that both uh, the Quran and the Bible are the word of Allah? And do you believe that it is possible to do so, to believe in the Quran and also the Bible as a uh, word of Allah? What's your good name, brother? My name is David Palmer. Brother David asked a very good question that does any Muslim believe that Bible and the Quran both are word of God? And is it possible to bring a comparison and, you know, agree that Bible and the Quran, the word of God, as far as the word Bible is concerned, what the present book that we have, there are some Muslims who believe that the Bible is the word of God. But as far as the Quran is concerned, as far as those Muslims who have knowledge of Quran and the Islamic Sharia, what the Quran says is that we believe in the Injil, the Wahi, the revelation which was given to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. A Muslim who has knowledge of the Islamic Sharia, he knows for sure that Injil, that is the revelation which was given to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, we have to believe in that revelation. And Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith to believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe that he was the Messiah, translated Christ. We believe that he was born miraculously without any male intervention, which many modern day Christians do not believe. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe that he healed those born blind lepers with God's permission. And the Quran mentions that Injil is the Wahi which was given to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Now, those who have studied the Bible, they realize that the Bible is not the original revelation which was given to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Any person who's a scholar of the Bible, whether he be a Christian, whether he be a Hindu, or whether he be a Muslim, when we study the Bible, we realize that this Bible that we have today, the word Bible comes from the Greek word biblos, which means the book or the book of books. And as you may be aware, the Bible is a compilation of books, 66, according to one group of Christian Protestants, and 73 according to the other group, the Catholics, other denomination. So this Bible is coming from the Greek word biblos. So what we Muslims who have knowledge of the Sharia, we say that this Bible is not the original word of God. This Bible, if we study, it does contain some part of them, maybe remnants of the word of God. Some portion is the word of the prophet, Jesus peace be upon him. Some portion is of history. Some portion, I'm sorry to say, even contains pornography. There are many mistakes and contradictions. So we can't attribute these contradictions in the Bible to Almighty God. We cannot attribute the scientific errors in the Bible to Almighty God. So what we say that we agree that Injil, the revelation which was given to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is verily the word of God. But the present Bible is a mixture. So as a whole, those people who have knowledge of the Quran and the Bible, they will never accept the Bible as a whole to be the word of God. But yes, the original revelation given to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is the word of God. Coming to your second part of the question, that can there be conciliation, can there be some commonalities? I've given a talk on similarities between Islam and Christianity. Since we agree that the original revelation which was given to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was the word of God, so we are trying to pick up those portions which match with the last and final revelation. If there's something like the Old Testament, New Testament, the glorious Quran is the last testament of Almighty God. And this, if you apply the other test to it, whether it be the test of science, the Quran passes the test. You cannot find a single contradiction in the Quran. You cannot find any mistakes in the Quran. So if you put it to test, the same test, whether to Hindu scriptures, or the Quran, or the Bible, we find out that the Quran passes the test, but unfortunately, the Bible fails the test. I had a debate in USA, Quran and the Bible in the light of science, along with a person by the name of Dr. William Campbell. He wrote a book saying there are 30 scientific errors in the Quran, and for many years, no Muslim replied to it. So I had gone to Chicago, we had a dialogue, we had a debate, and Alhamdulillah, 
by God's grace, by God's mercy, I replied to all his allegations. But when I pointed out 38 scientific errors in the Bible, he could not reply to them. Coming to your second part, can we find a reconciliation? I said, yes, we can. So what I have done, I have picked up those portions of the Bible which matched the Quran. And we Muslims have got no objection in accepting this portion of the Bible as the word of God. Because Quran in Arabic, it is also called as the Furqan. Furqan means the criteria to judge right from wrong. So if we have a scale, we can easily identify whether it's right or wrong. So when we use this scale and whatever conciliates with the Quran, we Muslims as a whole don't have any problem in accepting that portion of the Bible to be the word of God. So in the Bible, if we analyze, there are various similarities. Time will not permit me to talk about all of them. But as I was talking earlier, that we Muslims, we believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe he was born miraculously without the male intervention. We believe he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe he healed those born blind and lepers with God's permission. So the Muslims and the Christians, we are going together. But there are parting of ways. There are many Christians who say that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he claimed divinity. He said that he was almighty God. In fact, if you read the Bible, there is not a single unequivocal statement, not a single unambiguous statement in the complete Bible, which Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or where he says worship me. I would like to repeat, there is not a single unequivocal statement, not a single unambiguous statement in the complete Bible, which Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or where he says worship me. In fact, if you read the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself said, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 28. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, My father is greater than I. Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 29. My father is greater than all. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 28. I cast out devil with the Spirit of God. Gospel of Luke, chapter number 11, verse number 20. I, with the finger of God, cast out devil. Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just. For I seek not my will, but the will of my Father. Anyone who says I seek not my will, but the will of Almighty God, he is a Muslim. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he submitted the will to Almighty God, and in Arabic, such a person is called as a Muslim. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he never claimed divinity. It's clearly mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter number 2, verse number 22. Ye men of Israel, Listen to this, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles which God did by him, and you are witness to it. A man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs which God did by him, and you are witness to it. So he was a man, but a man sent by Almighty God as a messenger to the human beings. And if we analyze that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he never claimed divinity. He was one of the mightiest messengers of Almighty God. So here we say that if we study the Bible, there are various similarities. For example, the Bible mentions that there is a messenger to come whose name shall be Muhammad, peace be upon him, in several places, in the Old Testament as the New Testament. If you read the Old Testament in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 18, it is mentioned Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam going to come. It is mentioned in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 19. In the book of Isaiah, chapter number 29, verse number 12. In the Song of Solomon, chapter number 5, verse number 16, he's mentioned my name. He's even mentioned in the New Testament. In the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 16. In the Gospel of John, chapter number 15, verse number 26. In the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 7. In the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14. That the last and final prophet to come, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is mentioned in the Bible. So there are similarities. If you read the Bible, even the main aspects of Salah, how we Muslims pray that we prostrate is mentioned in several places in the Bible. In the book of Genesis, in the book of Joshua, in the Gospel of Matthew, various places that all the prophets of God, they prostrated to Almighty God when they offered Salah. So if we see the Muslims, the way we offer Salah, the major part is even mentioned in the Bible. About the other aspects of Islam, about ablution is mentioned in the Bible. We do wudu before offering Salah. It's mentioned in the Bible. It's mentioned about zakat as is there in Islam. It's even there, somewhat similar in Christianity, that give fervent charity, for that will wash away your sins. Even the Bible mentions in the Psalms, chapter 84, 
verse number 4 to 6, it mentioned that blessed are those people who travel to the valley of Bakka, talking about Makkah. Further, if you analyze that there are various things prohibited in Islam, in the Quran, which is even prohibited in the Bible. As the Quran says in no less than four different places, in Surah Maida chapter number 5, verse number 3, in Surah Baqarah chapter number 2, verse number 173, in Surah Anam chapter number 6, verse number 145, and Surah Nahal chapter number 16, verse number 115, it's mentioned, Hurrimat alaikumul maitutu waddamu walahmul kinzir, mama ahulali gerillabi. Forbidden for you for food are dead meat, blood, the flesh of swine, and any food on which any name besides Allah, Almighty God's name is taken. Now, all these things are even prohibited in the Bible. If you read the Bible, in the book of Genesis, in the book of Leviticus, in the book of Deuteronomy, blood is prohibited. It's mentioned in the Bible that even pork is prohibited. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 14, verse number 8. In the book of Isaiah, chapter number 65, verse number 2 to 5. Having dead meat is prohibited in the Bible. In the book of Acts, chapter number 15, verse number 29. About having any food on which any name besides Almighty God's name is taken, even that is prohibited in the Bible. In the book of Acts, chapter number 15, verse number 29. Many things prohibited in the Quran is even prohibited in the Bible. So as far as the similarities are concerned regarding modesty, the way a Muslim is supposed to dress up, she should cover her head, her complete body except her face and hands can be seen. She should wear loose clothes. She should not wear clothes that of the opposite sex. These are the rules of the Sharia given in the Quran and the Hadith. Similarly, if you read in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 22, verse number 5, it says that a man shall not wear clothes that which pertinent to a woman. Neither shall a woman wear man's clothes. All that, that do so, it is an abomination for them. That means wearing clothes of the opposite sex is private in the Bible. If you read the first Timothy, chapter number two, verse number nine, it says that the woman should be dressed up with modesty, with shamefacedness, with sobriety, should not have costly array or wear gold or pearls. And it's mentioned in the first Corinthians, chapter number 11, verse number five to seven, that the woman that prays to Almighty God and does not cover her head she dishonors her head and her head should be shaved off. Means her head should be shaved off. There's no verse in the Quran or the Hadith which is so strict in modesty. There's no verse in the Quran or the sayings of the Prophet that a woman does not cover her head should be shaved off. But that's mentioned in the Bible. So as far as modesty, that is the reason if you see the photograph of Mother Mary, may Allah be pleased with her. The way she's dressed up is like how a Muslim woman is dressed up. Complete body covered except the face and the hand of the wrist. If you see the nuns. So if we analyze, there are several similarities between the Bible and the Quran. So in my talk, similarities between Islam and Christianity, I say that if Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, then we Muslims are more Christian than the Christians themselves. Well, all this is mentioned in the Bible. Bible says don't have alcohol. In the book of Ephesians, chapter number 5, verse number 18. In the book of Proverbs, chapter number 20, verse number 1. They don't have alcohol. Muslims don't have. But most of the Christians have. Jesus Christ was circumcised on the eighth day. According to the Gospels, the Muslims are circumcised. Most of the Christians are not. So if Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, I would like to say that the Muslims are more Christian than the Christians themselves. So as far as this first part of your question, that the complete Bible cannot be considered the word of God, your second part, yes, there are many similarities. And we do consider that the part of the Bible is the word of God. We have to try and find out which part it is based on the glorious Quran. And then inshallah, the Muslims and the Christians, we can be one. Hope that answers the question.